Hey everyone, I'm Tashina from LogicalHarmony.net. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a chatty get ready with me. I'm going to use this elf palette that I just got. And I'm just gonna go through a question that I got recently on Instagram that I thought would be super helpful to just open up, share my thoughts on and have a discussion about, which was, what do you do when you have friends that aren't cruelty free and vegan and how do you handle that? I thought it was just a really important discussion to have. So let's get right into it. And if you guys wanna see how I got this look, you can watch it as well. Skin Owl Beauty Whip. This is such a good primer for a lot of foundations. I love it. And my skin lately has been not super pleased with me, so this has been really nice. The weather's just been crazy and it's making my skin so dehydrated no matter what I do. So I did like a pump and a half. I'm gonna apply that. I'm being really careful around my brows because I just did my second microblading session with microblading by Ari. I'm really happy with them, but I'm not supposed to touch them. So I'm gonna be doing a very dainty job around my eyebrows. So it might look a little weird, but it's real. That's It is what it is. One of the things that I wanted to talk about is, and also to just quick get this out of the way, everything's cruelty-free, everything's vegan, everything will be listed down below as well because I probably won't really talk about it. Um, and I will do my best to include shades too. That way you guys know, do I wanna do snow? Yeah, yeah, let's do snow, okay. So I kind of wanted to talk about something that I got as a question on Instagram and I felt like it was such a good topic slash I would have so much to say that I really thought it would be good to talk about in a get ready with me because I think it's worth sharing and I just wasn't sure. I don't know, I don't want to do like a whole like sit down video about it, but I thought that doing a get ready with me about it could be helpful. And it was a question from someone asking, um, Actually, I believe it was from Jessica Hayes, which if you don't subscribe to her or follow her, you should. She's quite lovely. I quite enjoy her. Um, her aesthetic is very different than mine, so I think you guys will find that enjoyable as well. Anyway, so she had asked, you know, what do you do when you're cruelty-free and vegan and, like, your best friend isn't? How do you handle that? And I thought that that was a really good conversation starter and, like, a good conversation topic. Probably not a good conversation starter, but... You guys get what I mean. It's a good topic to cover because I think it's handled various ways in the cruelty-free community and I know people feel different types of ways about it. And I thought it'd be good to kind of talk about what my approach is because this is a question I get asked a fair amount. And so I figured, you know, I think, she, I think she's asking it because she's curious like what I would have to say because it is a good talking point and it's something that it does really become an issue, like in a heated issue in a lot of the cruelty-free community where people just feel so differently about it. Um, I think that a lot of people feel like, you know, if someone doesn't agree with them, just cut them out of your life and things like that. Like I've definitely seen that where people who are like, I've yelled at them about this. How do I get them to see? And really what it is is you can't, like you can't force anyone to change their views or to see something your way that's just not, I'm just gonna put this all over my face. Um, that's just not how the world works. It's not how things are. Um, everyone is and should be allowed to come to their own, occlu own occlusions. Everyone should be able to come to their own conclusions and have their own opinions on things. And it can be hard when it's something that you are very passionate about and it's someone you really care about and you don't necessarily see eye to eye on something that's very important to you. Like, I totally get that. That can be incredibly difficult. I think that when it comes to cruelty-free or to vegan, it's all about being welcoming and accepting and realizing, you know, this person, it's probably new to them. I'm sure they've dealt, you know, they probably dealt with some different things about it in the past or it's totally new and they don't really know much about it. And so I think really compassionate education is the key. So if it's like, you know, you want them to try vegan food, make them something that's vegan and don't, you know, do something easy that you know they're going to like. Um, probably, you know, for a lot of people, vegan meats and cheese are not necessarily the best intro, but something like, make them cookies that are vegan, you know, or things like that, like just little stuff or pasta dishes, stuff that's very, very easy. And that really isn't that different. Like, honestly, 
Is there even a taste difference between a vegan cookie and a non-vegan cookie? Probably not. And I think for a lot of people, they just have this weird notion that vegan food is somehow different, like that it's all macrobiotic or it's all weird because it, a lot of vegan cheeses and meats did used to be pretty gross. Um, and so I think just meeting people where they're at and getting in those small introductions is super important. And when it comes to like makeup, I think just having conversations is really important. You know, like I definitely, I have a lot of friends where cruelty free and vegan is not their priority. It's not something that they are super concerned with. And I see it as just a way to help educate them. So I will do things like, you know, if I know that they're really into skincare for their birthday or for holidays, I'll buy them some vegan skincare that's really nice and just showing them stuff that is really high performing and isn't that different from what they're using. And also a lot of people, and I think I talk about this too in general, a lot of people use a lot of cruelty-free brands or vegan products and don't even realize it. And so just kind of letting them know, like if you are with them and they're doing their makeup and they're using like Too Faced, for example, um, just cause that's a really common brand being like, oh, hey, like, I'm so stoked you're using that. Like, Too Faced is cruelty-free and that product's vegan. Like, isn't it so good? And then using that as a point to talk to them about other things or if they ask you for suggestions, obviously suggest the cruelty-free and vegan option. And you don't need to lead with that it's cruelty-free and vegan. I think sometimes that is, like, it's, I think sometimes in some cases, it's important to not lead with that because then people assume that that's, like, I don't wanna say your agenda, but sometimes they just perceive it differently if that is what you start with. But I think introducing them to products, giving them presents, buying them things, if you're out shopping with them, I think that is like the best way to do it because you're right in the moment. And if you're at like Sephora, for example, pull them over to like a cruelty-free display like Smashbox or Hourglass or Cover FX and be like, oh my gosh, I can't decide between these two. Can you help me? And just like using it as a, as a way to just like show them that the products work. Because I do think that's one of the biggest misconceptions is that cruelty-free vegan products are super crunchy, earthy. You have to buy them at Whole Foods. You're not going to find them at Sephora. There's so many missed, like weird conceptions about them. And so I think letting people know that it's really not going to change anything about their shopping habits. It's not going to change anything about the products that they use other than they can have more fun shopping now. Um, I just think really education is important and coming at it from a very compassionate, understanding place. I think a lot of people feel like, what I've heard from a lot of people is that they feel like when they go cruelty free, it is so incredibly overwhelming. They feel like they have to throw away everything. They feel guilty for using stuff that's not cruelty free. And I think stuff like that really keeps a lot of people from going cruelty free. And I think too, just that, I think a lot of things about the cruelty free space are very positive and encouraging and welcoming of people where they are. And then there's also a lot of, there are a lot of people that take it from the point of like, you're not doing enough, you need to be perfect, throw out everything overnight, screw you off like and that honestly that doesn't help people who are already struggling it makes them feel like it's impossible and I think that's really the thing to keep from is making them feel like it's impossible so just encourage all the small things help them where they can don't be pushy let them know you're there as a resource send them some different resources if they ask for it if they don't then just give them some things as a gift. I think that is the best way to do it, especially if it's stuff that is very clearly labeled cruelty-free vegan. I think that can help people be more interested. Um, hold on, I'm gonna spray this. Whew. That smells like orange candy and I really like it. Like those gummy chewable Obviously they're chewable if they're candy, but those gummy orange slices that I don't know if I've ever had as an adult, but that's what that smells like. Anyway, I thought that was just a really good question and a really good topic because I feel like there's so much controversy about how to support someone in going cruelty free, how to bring it up with your friends and family. And I think keep it simple. I think that is the best way to do it. Keep it simple, be compassionate, be understanding, meet people where they're at 
and just realize everyone's on their own version of this journey. Some people can go cruelty free a lot quicker than others for various reasons. Some people, it just takes a while. And I get a lot of emails from people who are, sorry, I have an itch. Um, I get a lot of emails from people who feel really guilty because they've swapped everything except one product and they're struggling to find a replacement for that. And, you know, I think just really emphasizing to people that all those small things add up. It all makes a difference. And it's not about being perfect. It's not about doing it overnight. And for a lot of people, it's about doing what you can in that moment. Um, you know, everyone's in a different position financially. Everyone's in a different position as far as what's available to them. And I think being understanding of that is really important too. And also, you know, like the waste aspect of it, like if you have makeup and skincare that's not cruelty free or your friend does and you want to introduce them to it, they don't have to throw, a, like they shouldn't throw stuff out. They should donate it. They should use it up, whatever is going to work and that that's okay too. I feel like I kind of went on a tangent there, but I don't know. I'm curious. What do you guys do when your friends are not into cruelty for your vegan and you want them to be, or what are some of your tips of how you get people interested and just when people that you know are interested and they've come to you for help, what's some of the advice that you've given them? Leave some comments down below because I'm super curious to see how you guys all, you know, feel about this, how you handle it, little things like that. Oh, I have another itch. I'm just super, super curious. So I'm using this new e.l.f. palette today. It is the Opposites Attract. They sent this to me. I'm so excited they did because I was about to order it. I used the shade Fresh all over my lids. So this has a warm side and a cool tone side and I love that they did that. Something about this, it's very lightweight, but the shadows feel nicer than their regular palettes. And it's probably the same formula. I think it's just something about the presentation makes me feel like it's a nicer palette. Do you guys ever have that happen where just something about it, you're like, this makes literally no sense why I think this is nicer. But packaging sometimes makes such a huge difference. It's crazy. I thought that was just such a good question and such a good talking point to bring up. And I know we all come from different backgrounds. We all come from different experiences, but my take and what I take with logical harmony is just being compassionate and understanding and realizing everyone's on their own version of this journey. And going cruelty-free is a journey. It's a different learning experience for everyone. Everyone starts somewhere different. And everyone ends up somewhere different. And I think just really understanding that and acknowledging it. And you can't fight people. You, I mean, you can, but it's probably not going to do much good. And people are going to do things when they're ready to do it and as they want to do it. And so the best thing to do is just be there as a support for them. Help them out when they want it. You know, if they're not going to ask for help, find ways like... You know, like I said, like buying them gifts of stuff that's cruelty free, like there are a bunch of little things you can do to help get them more aware. And I feel like with everyone, once they start to become aware, they do want to learn more about it and they want to just keep becoming more aware. Like you can't, you can't unlearn things. And I think for a lot of people too, it comes in the form of the positive, not, you know, not everyone will respond to like the shocking videos. I think sometimes those do more harm than they do good because people just shut it out. Y you know, reaching people in a way that works for them is very, very important. It's not about you. It's not about what works for you. It's about what works for them. And I think that is an important thing to realize is it's literally not about you. It's about the animals and it's about how people can be helped. Um, and there are all different ways to do that. So it can be small, it can be big. I saw one thing where someone was going to like some drugstore and putting stickers on displays, being like, this is cruelty free, this is vegan. Uh, I'm not condoning you necessarily do that because I'm pretty sure you would get in trouble. But I think there's a lot of stuff that can be done that's helpful and that's, you know, it seems like it's small, but it's not. It does have an impact. And I think if it's, if you get one of your friends interested in cruelty-free and you're helpful and you answer all their questions and they decide to go cruelty-free, that is amazing. And it's just all about celebrating the small steps because sometimes, you know, everyone's in their own place. Sometimes you do only get the small steps, but don't ignore them, you know? Don't discount them. They still matter. All those small things matter. And I think that is super important to acknowledge too. Like, 
in the example of people swapping stuff out, picking one product that is cruelty-free and vegan is that's positive and that is a good change. And I think celebrating that stuff is so important. So if you can get your friend who buys all L'Oreal, all Maybelline, all Benefit, if you can get them to try one product from Cover FX, from Wet n Wild, from Elf, from Pacifica, you know, from all these other brands, which I'll link to some of our shopping guides down below, but getting them to swap one product, that's the start. And really understanding that that's the start of something that could be a really cool journey for them. And I think a lot of people, once they try one product that's cruelty-free and vegan and realize it performs the same, or once they look at their makeup bag and realize like they're already using stuff that's cruelty-free and vegan and they love it and they like how it performs, I think that makes it so much easier for people just because of that misconception there. Realize that there's no point in arguing you know, or maybe not that there's no point, but keep your arguments and your debates to situations where they're going to matter, I guess. I don't really know of a right way to say that. Know when to, know when to go into those modes, basically. Know when it might be something that's worth fighting for and know when it's just simply worth approaching in that way. And most of the time, things aren't. Most of the time, they're worth approaching in a loving, compassionate manner. And you get so much further with most people doing that. I've talked to so many people who are so, I don't want to say they're like intimidated by cruelty-free, but they have been so turned off to it by previous encounters. And then I talk to them and tell them like, oh, you're using these brands. That's so rad. And they're cruelty-free. And you know, oh, you should check out this. I think based on what you've told me, you'd really like this product too. And it happens to be cruelty-free and vegan. And I think that that approach just helps people feel much more open to it because they don't feel attacked. They don't feel like they need to be defensive. And I think that's what happens so much of the time is people, they go into the defensive mode and they completely stop listening to anything you're saying. And it doesn't do anyone like it doesn't help you, it doesn't help your friend, it doesn't help your friendship, um, at least in my opinion. But I think just being understanding of where people are is the biggest thing you can do and knowing that all you can do is help educate them is super important. Like education, using your voice and education are key and you guys will hear me say that. You've heard me say that so many times, you're gonna hear me continue to say it so many times. Like your voice is the most powerful thing that you have in this. And, you know, I think right now there's so much going on, like the Humane Cosmetics Act, everything around that is a really good way to educate people. Um, just ask them, you know, text this number and it helps the rep see that you support it. And I think there's so many ways to help bring up cruelty free and in a way that's productive and isn't pushy and helps open people's eyes to it. Because also too, I think, the thing to realize is that if you're into cruelty free, you already know so much more about it. Like you understand a lot more of the scope of it, like how many brands are still testing on animals, what goes in with animal testing. And I think we forget that a lot of people just aren't aware of that and really do think animal testing is a thing of the past, but it's not. It's still something that happens every single day um, in like a horrifying number. And I think that a lot of people, they literally just don't realize it. And they don't realize that these brands that they're supporting are testing on animals. And I really think that if people, once they understand the reality of animal testing, like what goes into it, how many animals are impacted, how unnecessary it is, how many brands are cruelty free and amazing, I think it really gets them to like think about their own habits and then introducing them to small swaps. Small swaps to small swaps is super duper important and super key. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, again, comment below. Let me know about experiences you guys have had. Like share your experience in going cruelty free. I think that that is really powerful too. A lot of us, we've just been cruelty free for so long. We forget what it was like to go through that process and how it can be really difficult for a lot of people. Again, like I said, depending on what's accessible to you, either store-wise, financially, or like resource-wise, like it can be so difficult for people. And I think we forget that. And especially if you don't have necessarily a support system, whether that's in person or online, 
I think it can make it tough too because it can get confusing. It can get overwhelming. And sometimes you just need someone who's like, hey, it's okay that you're confused. It's okay that you're overwhelmed. I went through that too. Um, I think that that's really important. And I think just, you know, helping people, like I said, where they're at, meeting them where they are, not where you are, but where they are is the most important thing. And just understanding it might take people some time. And some people, the reality is some people might never care. That's their decision. Like if that's how they want to live their life, there's nothing you can do really. You've, you know, if you've helped them and tried to do your best, it's all on them. You know, it's not on you. It's on them. Anyway, I hope that this was helpful. Again, share your experience down below. I think that oftentimes we forget to do that. And I get asked all the time, like, what made me go cruelty-free? What was my experience? And I think when we're in it, we kind of forget what it's like to go through that process. So comment down below with your experiences, what it was like for you. I'm really, really curious. I think let's just have a big discussion about it in the comments. I'll see you guys next time.